In this week's video, we're gonna talk a bit about the slider that I've been using for the past little over half year now. And it's something that I bought for using for my video journals. And I ended up getting the Rhino Evo Carbon 24 inch slider. So I've always really enjoyed the look of sliders when it comes to video. But since I am my own cameraman out in the field, uh, a manual slider certainly wouldn't work. And I also want to have something that is compact, something that I can take with me, something I can hike with, something that is battery powered. And actually I made a list of the things that I was looking for in a slider because I kind of figured that it didn't exist. I wanted it to be about two feet long. A three foot long slider would be a little too much for me to carry in the field. I wanted it to be lightweight. I wanted it to be strong. I wanted it to be battery powered. I want to have a wide range of controls as far as speed, as far as you know, bouncing back and forth. And I wanted it to be something that ideally I could put on my extremely lightweight Zero Series Gitzo tripod. So I kind of made my list and then I went ahead and did a little research. And I found that pretty much the perfect thing does exist. So I ended up getting the Rhino uh, two foot carbon fiber Evo slider. Yeah, I would say it's not feather lightweight because it's, it's very strong. So you got metal right here, really, really well made. Uh, it runs on these wheels with ball bearings, uh, so very, very smooth. But the key thing is that this slider is basically checking all the boxes as far as what I was looking for. I will say that the case that you can get it with, I think is probably is not very ideal for hiking. If I'm gonna strap this to the side of my bag, I just wanna make sure it doesn't get snagged on branches or anything like that. What I did find, and this is a bag that is now discontinued, but you might still be able to find them. This is a tripod bag from Tamarack that is an absolute perfect fit for the slider. It fits it absolutely perfectly. This is a model 324 uh, bag from Tamarack. I have two of these and uh, found that it was a perfect fit. So that is a really nice touch. Um, I use this on my Zero Series Gitzo tripod, which is an insanely lightweight tripod for being able to hold a slider like that. And uh, the nice thing is that when the camera moves from one end to the other, it does have a slight motion, but not enough that you'd ever really detect unless you scrub the video pretty fast back and forth. Um, but the way that the slider works, basically you have the slider itself, you have the controller unit, which also houses the battery. You have the motor that is gonna clip onto the slider itself. And then there's a network cable that is used to hook them together. So I'm gonna show you how it sets up. It's really fast to set up, which is really nice. Um, the way that I do this, since this is an older version of this Gitzo tripod, the center column is not keyed, so it'll rotate in any direction. The new version of this tripod is keyed, so this wouldn't work quite as easily. But basically, I start by just threading the center column right into the slider, and I can go ahead and drop the whole setup right into the tripod like that. And that also gives me the ability, I'm gonna tighten it down a little bit there, Gives me ability if I want to basically spin it from side to side just by doing that. And then I'll use the legs itself to level it out. In a perfect world, you'd want to use this on a heavier duty tripod um, because that would give you more stability as the camera goes from side to side. As far as the head that I use on here, I use a Manfrotto. It's the uh, 494 ball head. This is also the head that I use on the little Zero Series Gitzo if I'm just using it on its own without the slider setup. Uh, if I loosen the knob here, actually I'll spin this around so you see it from the proper side. So if I uh, loosen this knob, I do have the ability to move the slider. And then there's a belt uh, in the middle which was gonna spin this little guy right over here. So to hook the motor onto it, it's a pretty simple design. You got these little um, kind of connections here. Uh, this right here is where the motor connects, and then this is where the cable itself is going to connect. But this is going to fit right over the bracket here. And then you might have to move the carriage here just a little bit to line up the motor with the connector. And all you do is you tighten down these screws here, which you can basically do one-handed. So now the motor is going to be moving this guy. Our controller looks like a first-generation iPod. This also holds the battery itself. Battery life is really, really good. Uh, I used this for the first time this past August. I went on a trip to Glacier National Park with my wife. And while I was on the trip, 
I forgot to bring the charger for the slider, but it was fine because of the entire trip, I use a slider quite a bit. And by the end of the trip, I think my battery was down to maybe 60% of the original 100%. So I was really happy with that. I do bring the charger with me when I go on trips, but I almost never need to take it so long as I give it a really good charge to begin with. So now we're gonna hook up the cable here. This feeds power and communication to the motor, and it's just gonna clip in place right here on the side. And then we plug that in to the controller unit. Make sure that this is loosened up. And now as I turn on the unit here, it is going to have a little welcome screen and it's going to ask me which slider I have it hooked up to. So it says the Evo 24 inch. Click that, just kind of like an old school iPod. And then it has a few options. It has live motion, it has time lapse, and then there are settings. Uh, so I'm going to start by going to the live motion option. If I go to live motion, now there's two options. I have turn wheel to slide and then create a move. And these are the two settings that I use most of the time as I'm using my slider. I should say that I'm using it more so for video, not as much for time lapse, though I've also used it for time lapse as well. Under uh, turn wheel to slide, I'm gonna select that. And it's asking me if I'm ready to calibrate. When I click go, it's gonna move this to the far end where it now knows where that side is and knows where that side is. So what it's not gonna do it's not gonna ram up against the end and kind of jam the motor. If I just turn this wheel simply now, you'll see that it'll move as fast or as slow in whichever direction I tell it to go. Uh, this can come in handy sometimes for some uh, slider shots I've used this mode. Uh, you'll see when it gets to the end, it just kind of comes to a stop there. And if I bring it down to its slowest setting, uh, it barely creeps along, though you can make it go even slower if in the create a move or in the time lapse selection. As far as the sound that this makes when it's going, that was something that was of keen interest to me because I'll have my D750 mounted on here, I'll have a microphone mounted on there. And what I found is that I really should take my microphone and extend it with a cable and run it off camera uh, just because I want to make sure that the sound of the motor doesn't pick up in the audio. It's very quiet, but still will pick up. And there's been times where the hood on my lens rattles a little bit as it moves. But I'm gonna have it kind of, I'll have it go at full speed here so you see the sound as it's picked up on my lavalier microphone right here. Then here's part way. So it's quiet, but it's not silent. But I'm very, very happy with the audio levels. Um, but I do take my Rode microphone, I extend it out on a cable, and usually set it down in front of the slider itself. And at that point, I don't pick up any sound at all from the slider. So if we go to the other option here, which is create a move. And again, we're going to calibrate. So it's going to go all the way to the end and kind of figure out where the end point is. And once it gets to there, now I have a variety of variables that I can set. I have basically in, which is gonna see where it starts, and you're also gonna set where it ends, which is the out, and your variables, it's set in inches from zero inches all the way to 17.3 inches. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it at the default where it goes from here to there. Uh, you can have it move to the out position, so if you're trying to visualize on the screen kind of where that's gonna be, uh, that's all that's doing, it just kind of shows you a preview. I have it move back to the end point there. Uh, there's a variable for duration, so you're telling it how long it takes to go from your in point to your out point. In this case, we're going the full length. The default is seven seconds. I'm gonna leave it that just for the demonstration here. Uh, and then there's also an option for ramping, which is you can tell it for how many inches it kind of slowly comes up to speed. It's at full speed, and then how many inches it takes to kind of slow back down again. And the ramping is turned off by default, so I'm just gonna leave it there for now. And then looping is whether it kind of goes back and forth or it goes from one point to the other end and stops. I use looping a lot for what I do because I'm basically recording a video where I'm hiking away from the camera and then hiking back towards the camera and I want it moving in both directions. And normally what I do for my own particular use is I'll count, uh, let's say I have it set for about 25 seconds, which is about usually how long I have it go from one end to the other. I'll count in my mind uh, 25 seconds as I'm hiking away from the camera, then I turn around and come back. 
So it kind of goes one way as I'm hiking away from the camera and it's pulling back the other way as I'm going back. Um, but I'm gonna turn that on loop so that way it'll just kind of keep bouncing back and forth. If we go to start, uh, it gives me a little recap of all the information there. We're gonna click go and it's gonna do its seven seconds from one side to the other. And then it's gonna bounce back. Uh, it has a really nice uh, transition when it gets to the end. It's not gonna run into anything. Uh, so I've been very, very, very happy with that. I'll go ahead and stop it. Um, we also have options if we go back to time-lapse. Now this is something that I, I've used this for time-lapse just a little bit. And with my Nikon D750 that I'm using to record this video right now, um, I just use the built-in time-lapse mode. I'm not shooting time-lapse for the sake of time-lapse or I wanna take those individual pictures and put them together afterwards. I'm using it more so just so I can toss it into the other videos. So the fact that my camera is doing time-lapse for me is just fine. I'm not getting too, too fancy with it. So I use the simple time-lapse mode. And in the simple time-lapse mode, again, we're gonna start with the calibration. Uh, it gets all the way to the end there. And now you have a few options here. Basically, you can tell the direction, whether it's going right or left, uh, the time as far as how long it's gonna take for the time-lapse, and then you have your ramping ability. Uh, so by default right here, it's set for three hours and zero minutes. I'm gonna set that to zero hours and one minute, all will do two minutes. And then I'm gonna click start there, I'm gonna click go. And now this is ever so slowly gonna do its thing. This is usually how I have it set up on my Nikon D750. I have my camera taking pictures usually for about 10 minutes or so. I have this moving for about 10 minutes and I find that that has given me the sort of time lapse that works really well for what I'm doing. Um, overall, I've been really, really happy with it. It's really fast to set up. It's really fun to set up. Battery life is excellent. Um, the only real weaknesses I found is that it has a hard time climbing. It's not really designed to climb. Uh, so I can have it at a little bit of an angle, maybe about like that, and I can have it climb that. Um, but it's definitely not gonna be pulling your camera vertically. But overall, I've been very, very happy with it and uh, I will continue using this for a very long time because I really love the sort of cinematic look that it gives to my videos. I want to thank everyone for watching and we'll see you around next time.